I'll yeah. tell you one thing about Johnson, though, <laughs> which is that, you know, everybody knows about the conflict between my father and Johnson that started very early because my father did not want Johnson to be vice president. He didn't like him and he didn't trust him. Right, that I remember. Right. And when my uncle decided it was going to be Johnson, he sent my father up to tell him, which was excruciating for my father. My father never liked him, and then Jack did not pay a lot of attention to him as vice president, which hurt his feelings. And meanwhile, my father was kind of in charge of everything. So they had this antagonistic relationship, and then when Jack was killed, Johnson saw my father as his principal rival. And then when they, you know, they had a, when Johnson was nominated in Atlantic City in 1964, so Johnson, you know, took over in November of 63 when my uncle was killed. Then he was president for a little over a year. He had to run again, and he went, and the the Democratic nomination was in 64. And my father showed up at that, went to the convention very reluctantly because he was still shattered. It was one of his first public appearances. And he, and they played a, um, a video of about my Uncle Jack. And at the end of the video, uh, there, was a, um, there was a line from Shakespeare that said, you know, and when he dies, something to the extent, when he dies, cut him in little bits and throw him in the, in the, to the stars. And, I remember your father saying that. Yeah, and he said that. And he shall make the garish moon, you know, uh, jealous of, right. uh, of the, you know, yeah. of, the, not, of the darkness. And um, Johnson took that personally. He thought that it was an allusion to him being the garish moon because oh, he was going to recruit Jackson. So he took that as a slight, and then he saw my father for the next four years arrival, and then you know well, ultimately my father did run. But during that period when they had this rivalry, um, my father, particularly in the early days uh, after my uncle Jack sets was absolutely shattered, and he was almost. Um, he was disconsolate, uh, 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 and he was uh, he was almost um, catatonic. You know, he was so shattered that he was he wa he wasn't going to work, and he would you know walk around and uh, hikes all the time, and not really talk to anybody. And Johnson was worried about him, and sent him on two foreign missions. One of those missions was to Indonesia. Indonesia was about to go to war. Sukarno, who was the liberator of Indonesia, who the CIA had tried to kill, was about to go to war with the Netherlands. And Johnson sent my father there to try to settle this dispute, which he did. He had been made friends earlier on with Sukarno, and they had a good relationship. They ended up settling the dispute. and. And then he sent him on another tour to Asia. And there was such this, this profound outpouring of love for my father during that tour from people all over the world that it really um, made him feel like, you know, he had another role in life, like a later role. So, uh, so Johnson did that. And I've always, you know, remembered that about him, that he had that kind of, that grain of compassion at that point. I mean, people are just so complex. Yeah. You know, the, the, the way they can share the best and worst of them, like inside the same minute. It's, yeah. And now, when Johnson took over, did he uh, keep your father on as attorney general? Yeah, my father stayed for a so while when? and then resigned. He stayed, he, for, he stayed till he was gonna run for Senate. So he stayed right. on, but he didn't really go to work and also, you know, half of his employees at the Justice Department were FBI agents who worked for Hoover. And he had a, he had a, a, a buzzer on his desk for Hoover, which nobody had ever done. He actually treated Hoover as his, J. Edgar Hoover as his employee. And no other attorney general had ever dared to do that. Mm. And I went up there, yeah. me and my brothers would go up there and push the button and, you know, Hoover would have to come up and he would be very, very pissed off. <laughs> and, um, I was in Hoover's. But that wasn't a smart thing to do, was no, it? 
No. I mean, one, one time. No, I mean, to, no, to, to humiliate who? He wasn't humiliating he was, him. He was trying to bring him to under, under control because he was, you know, right. he was a, he had become a power of to course. himself. And he was, my father was, you need to report to the attorney general. I'm your, you know, your putative boss and I am your actual boss. So the second, and as soon as Jack was killed, and it was, it was J. Edgar Hoover who called my father and, um, and told him that his brother had been shot. And then, you know, an hour later, he called him and told him that his brother was dead. And my father told a, a friend of his, he said the way, the tone that he, that he used when he told me that was the same tone that he would use, kind of a matter of fact tone that he would use if he had discovered a communist on the faculty of Emory University, you know, that he would call him up for oh. that. So it was like, I, I, it was wow. a message. And no, then no, after wait. that, he never spoke to my father again. Wow. So even though my father continued to be his putative boss, he was now at a direct pipeline to the White House, which is how it had always worked. So Jack was the only president he could not call directly. Right. He had to go through my father, which he deeply resented. You know, and that's the good part of reckless. It also means brave, you know. I mean, your uncle, who was president, you know, made the biggest political sacrifice I think any political party ever made. The South used to be called the solid South, meaning yeah. the solid Democratic South. But that's because the Democratic Party allowed them to be horrible racists. Jack Kennedy... Well, the, one of the main reasons why a lot of the people, like people, my family, big Kennedy lovers, thought he was great was because he had the guts to say, yes, we're going to probably lose this entire region of the country, but this one issue can't go on like this. It's been 100 years since the Civil War. We have to, like, start this process. And, yeah, and, they, and then the South became pretty much the Republican South. I think it's still... Yeah. You know, um, hey, thanks for watching the clip. Hit the subscribe button now so you never miss out on our club random content that's posted daily.